so this car, you know, and I brought that up really early, but, um, you know, it's part of the story with the, the X1 is that it's really a deceptively large vehicle in a lot of regards. Excuse me. I guess not in, not in that particular maneuver, but that was driver error. Uh, driver error on this strange little subdivision. It's almost like a go-kart track. Um, and the X1 is perfect for that. You know, it's really... It's zooming, you know, it's got this 2-liter engine and rear-wheel drive configuration um, and a really compact wheel that uh, is a little bit thicker for this uh, M Sport model as well as the paddle shift for uh, the 8-speed automatic. So, you know, generally it's a pretty satisfying drive in that regard. Uh, but it is, you know, it's, it feels tight around, you know, um, around the controls in the way that some of the best 3 Series did from, you know, the, the great years of the, uh, of the the first and second generation 3 Series in the early 90s, which were terrific cars and were known for, you know, really wrapping themselves around you uh, by, with their controls and, you know, really buttery stick shift. It doesn't apply for this automatic, but um, it definitely applies for the electronic power steering, which is pretty, uh, pretty responsive. It's really meaty and... Uh, definitely gets firm on the highway and gets a lot of messages across, uh, especially on the rear drive version. So we're, we're producing 240 horsepower, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, through what's called a twin power turbo, uh, which is actually a, a, a single turbocharger with, uh, with twin, uh, twin vein geometry that is able to optimize boost, you know, from really low down. Um, and that's that's visible when you're driving, you know, trying.